Normally I start these videos off with the phrase of let's go tractor hunting, except for I already kind of went. So here's the deal. My friend Anthony unfortunately was not feeling up to par when I showed up in order to pick up these machines. And so we had a trade deal going on. Anthony has a Sears, a similar generation to this. And if you guys remember, I did a Honda revival, whatever type video. And I had two of those Hondas, one of which I needed for a future project and one of which was a spare. And after seeing this video, I talked with Anthony about the Duramax video I did with this Sears. And he decided he wanted to do something similar with his. So... This, by the way, this is a engine swap if you're just tuning into the channel. This is my latest Duramax swap that I just got done with. I'll post a link for this video if you're interested in the description. But anyways, back to this. And I wanted this machine because it has a transmission that will go in the go-kart build. I wanted this machine because I just think these things are a real oddity and cute and cool and I don't know. I have no reason to need it. I just thought it was interesting. Plus, I want to take a look at the shifter assembly that it has. So it lifts up and goes into reverse and then neutral. And then it's got a 5-speed 800 series peerless in it. So the 800 series Peerless is the grandfather to the 820. And I have used one of these behind a 25 horsepower Monster Kohler launching and drag racing for two seasons. So I know that they're strong as all get out. Now, obviously this engine has been abused and isn't worth anything. You ever meet that person that has an opinion on something and you agree look at this here's a basketball hoop here's a weight balance and look at what's being used in order to balance it out i couldn't agree more i shouldn't say that i mean they make really good boat anchors and they're free the icing on the cake for this deal is this engine here. This is one of those really cheapskate Walmart Tecumseh Enduro engines. And he believes that this machine was up and running a little bit before it got dropped off, that it was having some sort of deck belt issue or something like that. And I have to agree with him that that probably is a chance that it was because nobody would have bothered to buy a brand spanking new $30 belt to put in the rear if they didn't think the thing was going to be worth it. Now, I think we should see if we can get that Enduro running, drop it in this, and see if this thing runs and drives. Pretty simple concept. Go ahead, show them the cute ducky noise. <laughs> you, you feel better? Yeah. <laughs> I need this at work. <laughs> well, I fried my favorite Booster Packs battery, but I decided to tear the air pump out of it, combine it with this dead skill drill because they told me that even though it's under warranty, they refuse to. Let's see how this goes. I would say that works pretty good. I was noting, I don't know what that is on my finger, I was noting that those are off. So I wonder what the story is going to be once we get into this. So let's pop this off. Off. Or something. 
stay. Let's see if this even turns. Oh, that's good. That was, wow, that was a lot of pressure. Holy cow, that's a lot of pressure. All right, so either the belt's got something tensioning or we might have to see whether those are actually adjustable valves underneath there. And what's up with this not having anything? Why does that not want to come off? Oh, because it's gone. Okay, so if you ever are dealing with this, these filters are the same exact size as a 12 horsepower Briggs and Stratton. So all you do is just line it up on there and drill some holes in it and put a piece of tape over the center hole and it works. Just in case you ever need one of these. The Tecumseh one will cost you like three times as much as a generic one for a Briggs and Stratton. Every once in a while you end up with that company that stocks your YouTube videos and those are the best. This is Pow Run. Pow Run literally took my big giant booster pack video that I made that everybody likes and they took notes and they made a booster pack for us. It has the full connection clips. It's a 2000 cranking amp booster pack, easy to use, giant flashlight, fits in the palm of your hand, and best, the best part about it, it's got the safety sensor for it, for when you have somebody who doesn't know what they're doing, and a ginormous, easy to find, in the dark, no fumbling around boost button. I couldn't ask for somebody to listen any better. So we're going to use it on this video to see whether this Tecumseh is going to be the engine that we need. So if I unplug it, it'll reset the boost function. Plug it back in. So we'll give this some positive, we'll give this some negative. We're going to disconnect the green wire because that's the kill on these Tecumsees. Give it a little bit of bottle baby. Now somebody has definitely been into this carburetor because there's stuff that's monkeyed around with, bolts missing and stuff. but. Let's see if it'll actually do anything. Now, I was waiting for that. It will give me an error because this is crossed over. So let's disconnect this. Let's hold the boost button. Now let's try it. out the booster pack but I was expecting that so that didn't sound as if it was firing to me because I had more than enough gas in there to kick so let's pull the spark plug and let's kick it over and see if it actually has spark that spark plug is anything but sexy and you can see obviously it got gas on it from us pouring some bottle in so we're gonna clean this up and then we'll spark test. All right, I don't know if you guys can see that, but we definitely have spark in there. So let's put this thing back in, give it some bottle baby and some choke and see if it's happy. Choke on, bottle baby, spark plug, Wire brushed and clean. Take one. Let's 
Throttle set to full. Bottle baby. Choke. Intake is apparently not on correctly. So every time I add some bottle baby, it's just running down through underneath. So full throttle, bottle baby, lid choke, take two. Burning wires off, apparently. Here we go, let's try again. All right, something doesn't sound right. That little hesitation shouldn't be there either. It's got a release function that's messed up or the valves are way out of adjustment and that's what's going on here. So I think we should pull the valves cover and see whether those are adjustables or not. Well, looks like we're all going to learn. We got a T30 here. And this little green works has been working out really good. I like this. This is not a sponsor. I bought this with my own money. Well, what's the bet? Are we betting they're adjustable? They are definitely adjustables. Actually, you know, I don't want to accuse anybody of anything, but that looks a lot like a Briggs & Stratton setup. Which means if it is like a Briggs & Stratton, then that means that these have a tendency to walk over time and do some really stupid things. One of these things is supposed to move. One is not. Did you see that? That entire base right there, that stud is loose. So I gotta take this all the way off and then get that stud tightened up. Alright, choke on, full throttle, bottle baby, rockers tight, way tighter than they really ought to be, but if the pressure release is having issues, then we should be able to turn it over like hell now. Okay, so that debated firing. Leave the choke on. Let's hit boost. And let's pour some gas in as we try to fire it. Let's see if she's just really, really thirsty. Yep. That's it. She's just really, really, really thirsty. If you're going to be working on anything that is Briggs V-Twin or Hydro Gear transaxles, you're going to eventually need some of these. This set here is like 10 bucks. I'll post a link for it down below. I'm running into a lot more of these. So spend the money to do it right the first time instead of mangling them like apparently this one has been. See, the end of that one's been mangled. But this one fits correctly. So that one's going to come out nicely. Unfortunately, some Yahoo already got to this one with pliers because they probably did not have the right socket. Oh, we got lucky on that one. That thing that looks like a cow patty is a carburetor. And yes, that is a plastic bowl on the bottom of that with just a little clip like a brake setup from the olden days. Now, 
on some of these, this little stupid thing, this solenoid, is nothing more than a Phillips screw that goes into there, and you can unscrew it to drain this and then go back through. And we've got all kinds of fun caca coming out of there. The other interesting thing is, is that seems to have actual newer gas in it. It doesn't seem to go and have ethanol. So we're going to spray this all off and then check inside this thing. You want to make sure you break this free first because while it's wedged into here, you can get this undone. Once you pop that clip off, it's almost impossible. So we're going to get rid of the California stupid stuff. We're going to take that and snip it right off so we don't have to deal with that anymore. Like I said, on a lot of these, that is just a Phillips screw put into there. Now in order to get this bowl off, you're going to take a small screwdriver, you're going to wedge it in there, and lift, and then push towards yourself. And... There. Okay, sorry for shaking you guys. Now, this little gasket that's in here is directional so you need to make sure you know exactly where those two big holes were because it does matter and here is the float bowl which doesn't really look all that bad but we're going to get it all cleaned up now here's the other thing about this this thing is made, supposedly, to be serviced on machine in order to pop it off, quickly clean this, and pop it back on. So it's easier to take apart upside down, but it's made to be installed right side up. The thing that we're going to really check on this is this tube. This tube just pops right out. In these, this is replaceable. So we're going to make sure we can see through it, which we can, see the silver behind it. And we're going to check all those holes and make sure they're fine. So this carburetor actually looks relatively clean. Although that looks like it's ethanol water. Yeah, that's ethanol water because it's got like an oily feel to it instead of like gasoline and it's not flashing off. So we're going to drain all that out, put it back together, and go from there. Okay, let's see if we can make this thing fire up. So that's choke. That is choke off. We're on the gas tank. We know that it's flowing whatever is in here for gas, which actually smells pretty good. So full choke. Booster pack on. And let's give it some. There we go. So we did confirm the green wire is definitely kill there. Alright. I would say we let that cool down. And we get that pulled out. Don't exactly think that engine is coming back to life. There we go. So we put our hand over the top of that. We pressurized it with the air hose. And this is the lovely stuff that came out of it.
Now I get asked often, what do I do with this? Well, I figure it's water and ethanol, which means it's made out of corn. So therefore, if I use it to kill all the dandelions I can find near the garage, I think that's a good use for it. What do you use yours for? Managed to use the good old three-jaw puller in order to be able to get the electric clutch out of this thing and everything else. But what I'd like to do is get in under here and show you guys some stuff. So that is where the steering comes down and goes forward to that knuckle right there. But what I thought was really interesting was this bar here. So you probably can't make it out very well in video, but this has a spring in it. So that it goes up and goes cha-chunk, cha-chunk up on the dash for selecting the gears. So there is where the pivot is. So it's got a pivot here so that it swings around as it goes through the gears. And then this comes forward and connects right here for another pivot to an arm that's locked in right here that goes up and down. And then that goes to that right there in order to select through the gears. So reverse through five goes that way. Thought that was pretty cool. The other thing, if you're dealing with these 800 series peerless, and everybody calls these an 801 because that's the most common one that you usually see, but really it's an 800, is that right here, this is where the brake is on most machines. But there are also machines where the brake is on that side. So you have to pay attention that that's where it is. The other aspect is that, see that nub and see that nub? There are two different potential inputs depending on what they were designed for. There are also 3-8 shaft versions of this which use a very teeny tiny little shaft that goes in. My dragster with a 25 horsepower Kohler has one of those. The other thing is, is this thing has a cool double clutch setup stock from factory that I thought was interesting. And a center hanger assembly for the belts so that when you clutch they sit there. And this. I usually only see this on older machines and I love this design. These are double nutted. There's a nut on this side and a nut on that side and you can move them in and out in order to hold the belt inside this drive pulley. And I've only ever seen this done on some old racing tractors that were on a channel I used to watch. So I'm wondering if the idea originated from these Bolins. Does anybody else know of another tractor that uses this style? This is the only one I've ever seen outside of a racing tractor that does. But anyways, we need to get the engine out of the MTD and get it dropped into this thing. That one's ready to come out. But I wanted to point out this. Engineers, they suck. Literally, the only way to get those two out of there is to drop the entire front axle assembly out of this thing. Why? Why would you do that, Bolins? Anyways, I'm going to clean this up a little bit, and we're going to see if that will line up. Not going to lie, this engine swap stopped being fun hours ago. Alright, watch this. Isn't that cute? Want to see what's causing it? Can you catch it? Yeah, I've run into this a couple of times. Opie's for some reason have the drain in a different location than a lot of the flatheads do. So now I've got to unbolt that and lift this up and see if I can figure out some sort of plug or something in there. Translation. I probably should do an oil change on this right now while I have to get that plug out. But we're not going to, because Tecumseh. Wow! 
Wow, that was a tad bit of bad luck. So I was trying to fabricate the coupler bottom piece and I had it up on the engine and I was trying to figure out the spacer to go in underneath it and this thing just walloped me right in the bag just underneath my right shoulder blade. I mean like this thing is without question solid. Like, it's the weight of a hammer. Whew. This thing's out to fight with me. It just wants to argue. But as soon as I get a spacer in, we should be able to try and get this thing fired up. I talked about this earlier on the video, but you can literally see the Briggs logo right there. That's off of a 12 horsepower Briggs out of the junkyard. Drilled a couple of holes in it. Now I just put a piece of black tape right there, and good to go. Let's see if we can get this thing started up in the bowlins. We've got the belt and everything hooked up. Our booster pack is at 78% after using it to start this thing and crank it over at least seven or eight times. And I also used it in order to start a single cylinder Kohler the other day. So we're doing pretty good. You know, if we go at 25% was 8 starts, then we should be able to go and start 16 engines by the time we need to get restarted. So that's pretty good math. Now let's see. So we got our choke on. We're currently using the MTD choke as a throttle. I think we have it in the idle position, but we'll find out real quick here. And of course, every time I try and shoot this video, it starts to rain on me. By the way, it helps when you turn the fuel shutoff valve on. This machine just does not want to play fair. Okay, choke on. I came out here to drive it and this is what I found. This machine's just plain cursed, but whatever. We're gonna slice it off a little bit after this and stick it in there and see if it can go. This came off of a jet ski that I junked out a while back, so I'm not surprised that it's got holes, but yeah. We cut that test drive off early because apparently I forgot to go and put a clip on the end of that tire. So that was about to walk off on me. But anyways, it runs, it drives, it seems to have a slight hiccup in the transmission in third gear, which really doesn't surprise me. I see that a lot in MSTs. And a lot of the internals on the 801 share similar nature to the 930 series. And that's known to develop issues with third gear also. But it runs, it drives, it looks pretty decent. And it should be a good little yard rig for running around. I currently have 12 cubic yards worth of 2 inch minus gravel about to show up in the next two days. So I think this will haul a cart around in order to help with that project. 
thanks everybody for sticking around to see me work and monkey around with this thing and check out the booster pack link down below i'm impressed hopefully you guys are too